today we're going to be talking about platform as a service also known as pass what is it why should you care about it and how does it compare to the alternatives because in today's rapidly evolving tech landscape cloud computing has become an integral part of how businesses operate and innovate so among the various cloud service models platform as a service really stands out as a go-to solution not only for developers like myself but for businesses because it's so simplistic. So what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into what it is, how it works, its benefits, how it compares to other cloud service models. So by the end of this video, you are know whether you want to use platform as a service for your next project and why you should even consider that as an option. Let's get into it. What is platform as a service? So platform as a service is a cloud computing model that provides developers a complete platform to develop, run, and manage the applications, really without all the complexities of building and maintaining the underlying infrastructure. So think of it like you want to build your, let's say you want to make an app like Duolingo, but instead of getting the servers and the hardware and getting it all set up and then getting it connected to the internet, you just want to focus on making the Duolingo app. So that's what platform as a service is. It's like renting a fully equipped kitchen. Instead of building one from scratch, you get all the tools, the appliances, everything you need to cook, or in this case, develop. But you don't have to worry about installing the plumbing, electricity, or maintaining the appliances. So how does platform as a service work? That's a very good question. And let's actually just break it down as if I am trying to offer platform as a service as a product to you as a client. You know, the first thing I need to make sure I handle is the infrastructure. So me as a provider, I need to maintain the hardware, the software, all of the infrastructure, including the servers, the storage, networking, middleware, because you, the client, you, the developer, you just want to make your Duolingo app. You don't want to care about setting up a computer. You want to come to me to do that. So one is infrastructure management. Two, I need to provide a development environment that is easy for developers to use and to access. They need to be able to access it via the browser. And usually when you think about it, think of something like Firebase or think of something where you are going to some type of console and you are needing to access some type of development tools, access to the database. Maybe there are some services that this particular provider like myself, like, hey, I offer ChatGPT integration without you having to go to ChatGPT yourself. Those are things you want to make easy for your client to just integrate and not have to do all this setup. Number three, really want to focus on development. So me taking care of the infrastructure, you, the developer, you can really just focus on writing the code. And my favorite past platforms, I can just write my code, push it to GitHub, maybe a GitHub action for a little CI CD. And that action will be connected to Heroku, Google App Engine, or any other alternative. And I'm now deploying code into production, which leads into point number four, deployment and scaling. Me as a provider, once your application is ready, I need to be able to help you easily deploy, make sure it can go on any platform that you want it to go out to. And I need to handle the scaling, the security, because you're trusting me to say, hey, make sure my stuff doesn't get hacked, doesn't get breached, that if we have peaks, that you have everything under control. And I don't have to really worry about any of the backend concerns, which leads into point number five, ongoing management. You know, the path has to continue to manage the infrastructure, the middleware, the development tools. You as a developer, you just want to focus on making your application better, add new features and continue to, you know, add updates and improvement. We want to be able to provide a platform that is reliable and that you trust. And that is really why people start off with platform as a service. Now, some key benefits of platform as a service, we kind of cover some of them, but I'm just going to go through a, a quick bullet point list because one is cost effective two is time saving three the scalability is nice because the scalability done for you now there's always going to be a point where you might get to a scale where you want more control over things and that's where things like infrastructure as a service or start dealing with the container itself you're diving more into kubernetes you want more control over your system sure but to start off Platform as a service handles the scalability for you. Then it's accessible. And the fact that development teams really can work from anywhere with internet connection, like who doesn't like the fact that there's built-in tools, that there's automatic updates. And also no one really talks about this, but there is a standardization that happens. 
when you start following, think about it. If everybody had to manually update a physical computer, some of us would be better at it than others. But when only a few people are doing that for the majority of us, yes, there are some dependencies, but we also get some standards behind that. So here are some popular platform as a service examples that if you are looking to use for your next application, Heroku is always going to be the OG. It's just known for its simplicity. And as much as I would recommend it today, it's just kind of changed since it's been acquired, but it's still a go-to option for many. Google App Engine, if you are a GCP fan or a Google fan, Microsoft Azure has App Service, AWS have Elastic Beanstalk, and then Red Hat has OpenShift. Now, you might be wondering, we didn't talk about it today, but in other videos, we're diving into infrastructure as a service, and we're talking about software as a service. But really, what I want you to walk away with is platform as a service right for you. PaaS can be an excellent choice for startups, small teams, really looking to minimize infrastructure costs. And I would also say organizations focus on rapid application development. You want, to move, you want to move quick, you want to move fast. Companies wanting to standardize their development environment, but not quite there yet. And really teams that I think like to focus on innovation rather than the infrastructure management, because that is a type of mindset and type of developer you need to work with. Some like to set things up like they want a solid foundation and some are like, I want to be more creative. Now, when it comes to the future of platform as a service, cloud computing uh, continues to evolve and PaaS is adapting to new trends. So there is containerization, you know, many PaaS providers are integrating containers like Docker and Kubernetes into it, serverless computing, you know, some PaaS offerings are expanding into serverless computing capabilities or just serverless computing alternatives. Of course, you hear about AI machine learning, and then there's edge computing, which Past providers are really starting to offer edge computing capabilities because it is nice, especially if you're working in an IoT environment and you need that real-time processing need. So platform as a service, powerful, flexible way to build, deploy applications without really a whole bunch of headaches, a whole bunch of complicated infrastructure. But let me know what have you missed. Let me know what questions you have in the comment section below and check out the playlist for more videos like this.